Are you having a hard time figuring out what to get Dad for Father's Day? Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row1 and save 15% off your order when you check out Row 1 Brand's Vintage Sports Pictorium Gallery. They have America's best sports art. With over 7,200 historic sports prints, you're assured to find something unique for Dad this Father's Day. If he's an NFL buff, check out the 1963 Vintage NFL Helmet Poster. Shop now at sportshistorynetwork.com slash row1. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hello, sports fans, and welcome to another edition of Yesterday Sports on the Sports History Network. Today, we will go to part three of our most frustrating errors for great NFL teams. We will go to number eight, the Denver Broncos, from 1983 to 1991. After not reaching the playoffs for three years in a row, the Broncos made it back in 1983, but were quickly eliminated by the Seattle Seahawks, 31-7. In 1984, they posted their best regular season record in team history, going 13-3, and three, but again lost in the playoffs, this time to the Steelers. In 1985, they went 11-5, and five, but failed to reach the playoffs. In 1986, they made it to their second Super Bowl, but lost to a stronger New York Giants team, 39-20. to 20. They made it back the following year, to the Super Bowl, but were beaten badly by the Washington Redskins, 42 to 10. After a disappointing 8-8 record in 1988, they returned to the Super Bowl in 1989, but suffered one of their most embarrassing defeats in team history, losing by a final score of 55 to 10 to the San Francisco 49ers. After a very poor season in 1990, they bounced back the following year and came very close to another shot at the Super Bowl, but lost a very close game to the Buffalo Bills in the AFC title game. Despite all their past failures in postseason play, the Broncos went on to win the Super Bowl three times. Number seven may come as a surprise the 2005 to 2013 New England Patriots. For all the success this team has had in the last 20 years, even they went through a period of not being able to win the big game. In 2005, they lost in the playoffs. And in 2006, they lost the AFC title game to the Colts, 38 to 34. In 2007, they had a chance to make NFL history by becoming the only the second team to ever have a perfect season. They marched into the Super Bowl with a perfect 18-0 record, one game better than the 1972 Miami Dolphins, who went 17-0. Their opponent would be the 13-6 New York Giants and the biggest upset since the Jets beat the Colts in Super Bowl III, the Giants defeated the heavily favored Patriots 17-14 to ruin their perfect season. In 2008, the Patriots went 11-5 but missed the playoffs, and in 2009, they lost in the playoffs. In 2010, they went 14-2 but lost in the playoffs to the underdog New York Jets, 28-21. However, in 2011, they were back in the Super Bowl, and their opponent would once again be the New York Giants. The Patriots went into the game with an impressive 15-3 record, while the Giants went in at just 12 wins and 7 losses. Once again, the heavily favored Patriots were beaten by the Giants, 21-17. In 
In 2012, they lost the AFC title game to the Baltimore Ravens. And in 2013, they lost the AFC title game to the Denver Broncos. In spite of how frustrating those nine years must have been, they more than made up for it with six Vince Lombardi trophies. At number six, we have the Philadelphia Eagles from 2000 to 2010. During this 11 year span, the Eagles made it to the postseason nine times, losing every time. In 2000, they lost to the Giants in the playoffs. In 2001, 2002, 2003, they lost in the NFC title game. In 2004, they had perhaps their best team ever. They reached the Super Bowl with a 15-3 record, but lost a heartbreaker to the New England Patriots 24-21. In 2006, they lost in the playoffs. In 2008, they lost their fourth NFC title game to the Cardinals. In 2009 and 2010, they lost in the playoffs yet again. The Eagles have had a few glory years, winning the NFL title in 1948, 1949, and 1960. And on February 4, 2018, they finally won the Vince Lombardi Trophy. At number 5, 1958-1963 New York Giants. During the six-year span, the Giants posted a very impressive 53-13 and regular season record. They reached the NFL title game five times, yet lost each one. They lost two in a row to the Baltimore Colts and two in a row to the Green Bay Packers, including a 37-0 humiliation in 1961. In 1963, they lost to the Chicago Bears. This is all in spite of having five future Hall of Famers on the team. Andy Robustelli at defensive end, Sam Huff at middle linebacker, Frank Gifford at running back, Roosevelt Brown at offensive tackle, and Y.A. Tittle at quarterback. This is not to say the Giants did not have their victories too. They won the NFL title in 1934, 1938, and 1956. The Giants also went on to see great success in later years, winning four Super Bowls. Number four, we have the 1988 to 1999 Buffalo Bills. The Bills reached the postseason 10 times in this 12 year span losing every time, including four Super Bowl losses in a row. In 1988, they lost in the AFC title game to the Cincinnati Bengals 21-10. And in 1989, they lost to the Cleveland Browns in the playoffs. In 1990, they posted their best regular season record in team history with an impressive 13-3 record and went on to defeat the Raiders in the AFC title game 51-3 and advanced to the Super Bowl for the first time in team history. They lost a hard-fought game to the New York Giants, 20-19. In 1991, they again went 13-3 and and again lost in the Super Bowl, this time to the Washington Redskins, 37-24. In 1992, they made the greatest comeback in playoff history, defeating the Houston Oilers 41-38 after trailing 35-3. They made it to their third Super Bowl in a row, but were humiliated by the Dallas Cowboys 52-17. The following year, they lost their fourth Super Bowl in a row, Dallas 30, Buffalo 13. After a disappointing 7-9 record in 1994, they bounced back to reach the playoffs in 1995 and 1996, but lost both times. They dropped to a 6-10 record in 1997, 
but came back again in 1998 and 1999 to reach the playoffs, again losing both times. After the playoff loss in 1999, the team did not reach the playoffs again until 2017. The Bills won the AFL title in 1964 and 1965, but have still not won the elusive Vince Lombardi Trophy. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hi, I'm Oz Davis of the True the Goats podcast here at the Sports History Network. I'd like to take a minute to tell you about quite possibly the greatest website of all time, newspapers.com. If you're listening to this podcast or any of them at the Sports History Network, you're probably into sports history. And you probably also know that for learning about anything prior to, say, 1990 online, the typical search engines like are nearly completely useless. But then there's newspapers.com. Newspapers.com gives you access to over 640 million pages worth of news from North America, Britain, Ireland, and more, dating from 1798 to last week. Do up a search for Super Bowl I, the 36th Berlin Olympics, Wayne Gretzky's first game, whatever. Newspapers.com takes you there with historical flavor that search engines like just don't give you. And now, get a free one-week subscription to Newspapers.com by visiting sportshistorynetwork.com slash newspapers. With a paid subscription, you'll also be helping to support the production of Myth Podcasts and other Sports History Network shows. That's sportshistorynetwork.com slash newspapers. Newspapers.com. Way better for searches than You know what I'm talking about. We here at the Sports History Network proudly partner with 26 podcasts, all revolving around the history of sports. But did you know that many of our hosts were sports history authors way before they started their shows? It's true. We've got Joe Ziemba, host of When Football Was Football. Joe Zagurski, host of Pro Football in the 1970s. Mark Morthier, host of Yesterday's Sports. Tommy Phillips, host of Lombardi Memories, and Scott Adamson, co-host of From the 55-Yard Line. All these authors have many books for you to choose from. To check them out, go to our website at sportshistorynetwork.com slash sportshistorybooks. Pick up your copy today! Soundtrack provided by Kevin McLeod of filmmusic.io.